Here, the Thornson inertial propulsion drive powers a canoe and a swimming pool. The motor, which is housed in a box, never contacts the water or air. So guys, it's a once device that drawing for it, I will briefly explain. It consists of two systems, the left and the right. The reason for that is to cancel out sideways vibrations, and you only end up with front or back, or in this case, top and bottom. It has a fixed gear in the middle. Around that rotates a gear along, you can see uh, where the path goes. And as it's rotating around, this red weight will follow this path as there's been drawn in green. And going to Roy Thornton, the result would be a thrust towards the top of the page. So what I have here is a model of the Thornton device um, in Blender. And if I move this scrubber at the bottom, we'll see exactly how it moves. Now the red ball is to indicate the weight, which is attached to the green gear. Ignore the yellow arrow for now, I'll explain what that is later. The important thing to understand is that the green wheel moves around the blue wheel in a circular arc. Okay, now to make it more interesting, what I've done is I've written a script. Let me just pull that in here. Okay, and let's just run the script. You'll see that the size of the red ball has now changed. What I've done is I've worked out the momentum of the weight. And I worked it out based on the change in position with regards to the origin and the speed of that change. So what I'm doing is on each frame I've got 250 frames and on each of those frames I compare the current position to the previous position with regards to the origin and I use that change in position as a velocity and velocity times mass will give you momentum. And I then set the scale of the weight just as a visual indication to show you where the momentum is increasing and where it's decreasing. So now let's run through this again and note where the red ball size changes. So there's getting smaller, reaches a minimum over there, starts to get large, and there at the top it's at its maximum. Thread again in reverse. So what that tells me is that there is a change in the ball in the weight's momentum, and it's at the maximum along the top, and it's the minimum along the bottom half. That implies that there should be a centrifugal force which is offset, but it will be more towards the top than at the bottom. However, this is a closed system. The weight returns to its original position once it's done one round. And according to conventional science, that means there's no net gain and there should be no net force. However, I'm going to run some calculations and see if that's true. What I'm doing in the script is on each of the positions, I work out this vector, that's what this yellow arrow is. I work out this, the direction and the scale of this vector and I add it up. And when I get around, I have a look at what the sum is. The sum, according to conventional science, should be zero. So if I still have a resultant vector at the end, then it means there's an offset force. So watch the arrow. That's as it goes around. And I'm going to add up all of those positions. So let's see what the result is. 
So let's drag this window in here. Yeah? Okay. These are for each of the frames. That's where the vector was. And I add up all those, and you can see there's a tiny bit of X probably due to misplacement. On Y, there's quite a large value. And on Z, there's obviously zero. And if I scroll backwards, you'll see. Oops, it's a bit fast, but you know, trust me, I've done all 255 positions. I've added the vectors 250 times. That is the sum of the vectors. There appears to be a net force towards the top of the screen. Now, don't take my word for that. You can see over here on the left how I worked it out. Um, please feel free, and I encourage you to comment, check the maths. If I did something wrong, let me know. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give it a thumbs down. And yeah, I have done the same thing, except I've put four gears around the, around the center gear. And I've changed another slight thing. The weight is now the red dot. And I'm just using this yellow ball as an indication of the actual momentum at that position in time. So as I go around, you can see, looking at that yellow ball, it's still a minimum at the bottom. And now we want to see if we add up the vector for each of those weights, do we get the resultant vector that's useful and how smooth is it and that's what in the middle here this arrow represents the vector sum of these four weights and as you can see it gives a steady upstream or to the top of the screen it's surprisingly steady which means if you build this and if it works you'll get quite a steady thrust it won't be rattle your teeth you know sort of thing like in the original Thornson device. Again on the left is a script we I ran to work that out. It's basically the same as the previous one. Um, it's just times four. Yeah. So, hope you like that.